right, and now for the last team, uh, M Connects, Connecting Communities. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stephanie Embry, and this is Vivek Yada with M Connect. And we are excited to be here today to tell you about how M Connect connects communities using mobile technology. And to understand M Connect, it really helps to understand our story. M Connect was founded by a group of Triangle residents who are all very involved at the local level. Vivek and I are both past presidents of our local HOAs and involved in community events in the town. And any time you spend any time at the very local level, you realize that one of the biggest challenges that municipalities have, or communities, HOAs, is getting information that people want to the people who want it. Now, municipalities, which is our focus at the moment, have lots of ways that they get information out. Everybody has a website, and you can find anything you want to about the town on that website if you have the time to dig through the menu. Anything you want to know about the stormwater program is there. As long as you get the mouse to hover over to go down, 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 down. You want to register to reserve a space at a parks and rec shelter, you can do it if you can find it on the website. Towns also communicate through social media. Every town today has Facebook, has Twitter, has YouTube, often for their individual departments, which is a wonderful way to get information out. But as a resident, I don't need all that information all the time. And when it comes to the scroll, how often, how likely am I to happen to notice the one tweet that covers the one piece of information that I want as I'm scrolling through? I can set up an alert, but the truth of the matter is, then I get an alert from everything the town sends. And again, that's more information than I need. So our goal was to find a way to get clear, simple, effective communication to the people who want it. And the way we do that is with an app. And the app is designed very cleanly. It is a native application, which is rare. And it's very clean, clear information. Our goal is that within three touches, you can get to any piece of information that you want. In most cases, to two. We do have an app that is being beta tested with the town of Morrisville right now. And what we have found with the 400 downloads that we have is that people like how easy it is to find information. The towns control the data, therefore the towns can push out the information that they want. And the towns can push out information instead of waiting for residents to pull it from a website. As I said, we're a local team. We have diverse backgrounds that we have brought together to give us a really complete understanding of what is needed, both from the technology, from the sales and marketing side, and from the community side, because we all come from the community. Our customers are very broad. We're starting with municipalities, but we believe this kind of connection that is needed, that simplifies getting information, can be applied to schools, it can be applied to HOAs, it can be applied to a lot of different communities. This is the way that we are giving back. It's very important to all of us on the team to give back to our communities, and the way that we are doing this is building a sustainable model. And to be sustainable, it must be profitable. Thank you, Stephanie. I mean, if you look at the landscape, the way the town is communicating and engaging the communities are the four ways that you can proceed in this quadrant here. Quadrant one is the traditional way. Uh, uh, Stephanie talked in length about this emails and webs and all. Then the second thing which came out is the Facebook. And the place where we are positioned here is the quadrant three. That's the open data. But now open data is different for a city of Raleigh. It's different for a very small town like Morrisville. So we start with the town, and there's a lot of things this town needs to do to get to the open data, but that's where we see the future is going to be, that the mobile solution is what needed for the both at the town level, and it could be played from the both side, either from the town, or it could be coming from the residents. So quickly moving on to the two slides here in respect of time. Uh, town does not have a real-time communication need. All of us are talking in this room. Uh, look at the statistics of the Facebook and the social media. Social media is not the way the town should be communicating to the residents. 
Uh, open data is a place where I think if we have this collaboration with Smart City, IoT is the next big thing which is going to happen, and and connect basically fits in right there. Uh, Smart City is a partnership between the technology, the government, uh, and the wind farm. So where we go from here, some of the early uh, uh, battery care, 400 downloads, uh, some good testimonials from our young councilmen. And in terms of the next step is that this is a picture. Uh, we are sitting right in the middle. Uh, we are doing a guide development running every day. And so quick question, how, how will you plan to drive adoption? It's true, town citizens have a lot of options already. How do you drive adoption? Uh, Absolutely. One, one advantage you could see is that we are uniquely positioned there. There's no mobile solution there. So uh, go-to-market strategy, uh, we have different ways to go on reaching out to the folks. In town of Morris, we did the word of mouth. Uh, we reached out to the town. We are doing the NDA with the town. So town is going to adopt our application in next two to three weeks. And that's the partnership which we are working with the town. What about for the communities that have, you know, elderly, the more elderly citizenship where they don't have phones and that kind of thing. How would you manage that? Uh, I think that, that that's a great question here, and that's the reason the town is dependent on the newsletter because we, we cannot take you know, can take away that kind of thing, communication model. So I think there is some funding required there. Uh, we, we could see back to the, some of the statistics uh, uh, shown in this room here. 90 95 percent our uh, users are basically adopting to it, but I think an user, a senior citizen, if they lo love to continue with the existing model, I think we, we will definitely help town to continue with those models. And I think paper, unfortunately, is paper newsletter that might be the model which will continue for some time. This app is for users? Yes, it's for, for the user, absolutely. Just to be clear, the business model is actually twofold, and the, the drive for adoption will be twofold. You'll have the citizens who will download the app and use the app, but it is the towns that will own the platform. We have a back end that is a that is uh, where the town goes in and updates all of the information they want the citizens to see that are in the app. The app can easily be reskinned municipality to municipality, and a someone from the public information office enters the information for the app, the static information about the phone numbers, who the town council members are, and then sends the alerts. That gives them the control. The adoption comes from the citizen end. How, how long does it take for a municipality to adopt the platform? So thinking about entering phone numbers and data and all that, is there any automation that you know you have? It's at this point it is manual. When as you get all it. Yeah. Speak to this, but as you get more open data, you can scrape. So, in terms of setting up the town for this kind of application, one is the rescanning the code and all, but once we give the final piece of code to the town, it's a one hour job for get the town to up and ready. Okay. Thank you.